Hello everybody, in this presentation I want to show you how you can check the correct data import of a text file in the M Plus software. You can see that this is a data set in text, tab delimited text file format. Missing values here have been coded as negative nine, so there are no empty cells in there. There are also no string variables in here, just numeric values, just the columns, no variable names. And so a text file like that can be generated in, for example, SPSS. I have a separate video on that. And today we want to take a look at how we can check that this data set is correctly processed by M+. How do we get the data into M+. So when you open the M+, program, first of all, you get this empty window. And you can open an empty syntax file or start an empty syntax file by clicking on this empty page symbol here. And then we would start writing the code, writing the syntax in M+. And so the first thing that we would do is give a title to the analysis and say, um, testing the data import, for example. And then next we have to tell M+, what the data file name is. And we do this with the data command. And then we say file equals and we give M plus the file name, which in this case is math.dat. It's important to have the correct file extension. So it's a, in this case it was saved as a dat file by SPSS. It could also have a different extension. It could be txt depending on how you generated these data. And then we place a semicolon. Now the trick in M plus is to save the data file in the same a directory where you also have the data file and then you don't need to give a file path because then M plus will automatically find the data set in that same folder in which you also have the syntax. So next let's save the syntax file in that folder where I have the data set as well. So I'm going to file and then save as. So here I have this on the desktop in this folder and now I can say um, can call this file for example data import and then hit save so now my syntax file is saved it has the name data import and then the extension .inp for an m plus input file or we could say for a syntax file so now since my data set is in that same folder where I just saved the syntax. M plus will find this data file and we don't have to provide a file path here at all. What we do have to provide next though are the variable names. We do this in the variable command names equals and now we have to list the variables in the correct order which can be a little bit of a pain if you have a lot of variables because then you would have to type all the names you'd have to be sure that they come in the correct order so what I'm always using is a trick from uh, the program from which I exported the data in this case SPSS what I do is I go back to SPSS to that data file the original data file and I have all the variable names here in SPSS in the correct order and there is a way in SPSS to save the variable names in that order into a text file so I can then just copy and paste those names from SPSS syntax. So and this works by going to utilities in SPSS and then variables where you have your variable list on the left hand side and you can mark all the variables in your list on the left and then click on paste. What happens then is that SPSS pastes those variable names into a syntax window. You can see here's the syntax window that was just created and here we have all the variable names in one row just in a text file, space delimited. And so that works perfectly to just copy those names from the syntax and then paste them into 
M plus. Now, one thing that you have to make sure, though, is that in SPSS you don't have variable names that are longer than eight characters. If you have that, then M plus will give you a warning message and will say variable name is longer than eight characters and the rest is truncated. And so then if that could cause problems if you have variables that have similar names and that only differ in the characters beyond eight characters, then M plus would say those are duplicates because M plus only accepts variable names with a maximum of eight characters. So then you would have to make some adjustments in M plus to those longer variable names. So here I'm going to paste those names here into M plus. Now I have another problem now though, and that is that M plus also doesn't like input lines that are longer than 90 characters. So now this line is probably longer than 90 characters, and so M plus will cut off all the variable names that are beyond that nine, 90 characters limit. And so then what I can do is I can just organize my variable names by hitting return at a certain point, and then it's also a little bit more neat. So I have my variables that belong to this KFT test first, and then I have MRT, the mental rotations test, and then I have math test. And so if I just organize it like this, there won't be a problem. And I can just place a semicolon then at the end. Now the next thing that I have to tell M plus is are there any missing values and how are they coded? In this case, missing values are coded as negative nine for all variables, negative nine. And so this is practical because then I can just say missing equals all negative nine. So meaning for all variables, a score of negative nine means a missing score. And I don't have to give different missing scores for different variables. So it's useful to have the same missing value code for all variables if possible. I prefer a numeric missing value code because that has worked well for me. And so now if we wanted to check our data import, we can do this by using an analysis type that's called basic analysis, a command and then type equals basic. The basic analysis type allows us to get some information about missing data patterns, missing values, and then also descriptive statistics in M plus so that we can check whether our um, scores are correctly imported, whether the variables are in the correct order and so on. And you could do this with your whole variable list at once if you had the full version of M plus. In this case, I only have the demo version. And so I have to limit myself to six variables. So I'm just going to check on the math variables here. So I'm going to copy these from the names list. And then I'm going to paste them in another list that's called use var. The use var list allows you to pick variables from your names list that you want to use in your analysis. In this case, I can only use up to six variables, so I'm just going to pick those five math variables to see is M plus reading them correctly. Now, of course, you want to do this for all variables if you are serious with your analysis. And I'm just going to show you this for just this subset here, but you want to be sure that all the variables are correctly imported. Um, of course. And so that's all we have to do. And then we can um, hit run. Then M plus asks us, do you want to save the changes to your input file, the additions that we made now? And so we say yes, then it should run. And so then a warning here appears because there are cases that have missing scores on all variables because this is a sub data set from a larger data set. And so obviously cases that have missing on all the variables in this sub data set will not be used in the analysis. And that's the case for 133 cases that don't provide any information. Other than that, we have 454 observations and that includes observations with partially missing scores. And plus then first gives us the missing data patterns. Now in this case for the math scores we did not have any missing scores so therefore um, and plus therefore here does not give us any other missing data pattern other than the complete data pattern because those individuals who had missing scores on math had missing on other variables as well and so they were not included then in the analysis. 
the covariance coverage then is given, which allows you to look at what percentage of cases provided information for each variance and covariance. In this case, it's 100% for those math scores. You then get the means. And so you can check the means of these observed variables to see whether everything makes sense, whether you get the same means that you would also get, for example, in SPSS for complete data. And you get the covariance matrix and you get the correlation matrix. And then again, you can check whether those values are all uh, okay and appropriate. Now notice that if you do have partial missing data, then M plus would use full information, maximum likelihood estimation under this option. And so you might not get the exact same statistics as in SPSS, where SPSS might use listwise deletion or pairwise deletion or something like that. So you want to take that into account. Now, if you do want to use a listwise deletion in M plus just to check your data import, you can get that by adding the command listwise equals on in the M plus input file, and then you get no missing statistics. Then M plus will only use complete cases to begin with. This is not usually recommended to drop um, scores with missing entirely, but if you just want to check your data import and want to compare it directly to SPSS, you might want to use this option to see whether you get the exact same statistics in M+. Please also check out the description below this video for some other free videos that I offer, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.